Hey guys, how are we doing? Welcome back to day two. Um, just going to wait for the room to fill up, wait for everyone to jump on board. I uh, hope you've had a good day today. The uh, sun is shining right now. I know there was a few storms before, but it is all good right now. Hey Michael, welcome. Leanne, James, how are we doing? Hope you're well. Hope you've done your homework. Hey Debbie. Steve, how we doing? Martin, Tracy, Paul, Carl, how we doing, guys? Welcome back to day two. Hope you're ready to dive in today. Gail, how are you? Couple more coming on. Right, day two. So let's get stuck in, guys. Okay. I think the room looks pretty much there. We're good. Okay. So. First, to recap, did you track yesterday? Did you do all the things that you should have done? Have you tracked those six areas, the sleep, the steps, the, the hydration, your food? Um, have you started to notice any trends yet? I mean, like, I know it's only been maybe two days if you started yesterday, but if you started back on Friday, that's four days now, are you starting to notice anything? Just think after doing a week or two weeks, three weeks, you can look back and you can start to see trends happening. And then, obviously, when we can you know start to look back on some data then we can then say right let's you know let's start with looking at your sleep first let's address your sleep where does that need work or even does it need work once that's in stone then we can look at the next step then the next step so it isn't like i'm asking you to track all this data and then to change everything at once because that's not going to happen we like to work in a small kind of progressive progressive way okay did you get your training in and um, all the guys who are part of the vip have you have you done any of the sessions Bodyweight sessions, the band sessions, the dumbbell sessions, which one has taken your fancy, please let me know. And if you've got any questions, guys, again, remember, save until the end. Also, try to give a bit of context around that. I know Z's the one who's going to be uh, asking a question, so send the message to him or just post it on here and then he can ask it for you. Okay, let's get started. So today, I want to dive into the OPP framework. So obviously, yesterday, we, we looked at the three main kind of the three governing kind of principles that oversee how you should view things in terms of your health and fitness journey. Now I want to put together the OPP framework, which is uh, a bit more about you and how then you can start putting things into practice. So the O, the O stands for optimize. Optimize. So what are we optimizing for? Why do you want this? Do you even want this? When do you want it by? So this is all stuff thinking about your goal setting. And, you know, when we look at goal setting, we got to think deeper. We can't just say, guys, I want to lose weight or I want to get bigger. But why do you want to do that? What does it mean to you? What does it mean to your family? How is it going to make you feel? You've got to go two or three layers deep when we're looking at goal setting. Another way to look at it is um, identity. And I'll use myself as an example here. So if my identity as a dad, because I've got two boys, uh, and so I'll... I'm a parent to them, and then I'm also I also run a fitness business. So my my identity for my kids, what do I want to be seen as from their, you know, through their lens? Well, I want to be seen as being strong, fit. I want to be seen as eating the good foods, having fun, doing all those types of things. As a fitness business owner, again, I want to be seen as kind of preaching what obviously I'm, you know, we tell our members. Um then being fit and healthy, being strong, doing all the things that we tell them. So, you know, so that's what I want to be seen as. So if I want to be seen as that, what do I need to do? My identity wants to be this over here. So I need to actively be training, be living this healthy code, enjoying life, doing all the things that I tell people. So that's my identity and that's who I want to be. So if I understand who I want to be, then I will do, the, do these actions. And it's the same for goal setting. Um, I'm just going to show you quickly uh, a guy who came on board last week with us in terms of his goals and his whys and his reasons. And, you know, it isn't just a matter of losing weight. So it's, it's order a pair of jeans online. It was to wear his Hugo Boss jeans that, that he doesn't fit into anymore. It was to, it's to look at a picture of him and go, ah, he looks good now rather than have this shadow of this, this kind of silhouette, you know, how he used to be. Um, he doesn't want to look like a rugby um, prop. He wants to be more of a centre. He he wants his body to look more in kind of proportion with not just being overweight in the belly, but from top to you know uh, from head down, everything looks good and manly, shapey. 
um, stripped down his thighs, but generally said that he wants to, you know, kind of when he goes on holiday, he wants to be able to wear a t-shirt on the beach. Sorry, not to have to wear a t-shirt on the beach. And that's obviously that's something that he's done for many years just to try and cover up. So these are things that mean something to him. He isn't just coming saying, I want to lose two kilos or I want to lose 20 kilos. He's saying, I want to do this because of this, this and this. So when we look at your goal setting and what you're optimizing for, have a bit of meaning to it because when things start to get tough, you're going to, you need something to hold on to, something to, something to remember why you're doing it. Okay, so that's what are we optimizing for. Then we look at the principles. So what is the principle for your goal? And I've just given it just a, a couple examples here. If I'm looking to lose weight, what do I need to do? Well, the bottom line is you need to be in a calorie deficit. Your energy in needs to be less than your energy out. Therefore, you're going to create this gap, this deficit over time, then you're going to start to lose weight. However way you look at it, whether that is eating Mars bars, you could be in a calorie deficit and eat Mars bars all day. I'm not saying it's the best thing to do, but if that is below what your body needs to survive, then you will lose weight. Same for building muscle. So this is a little bit different. You'd probably say you need to be in a slight calorie surplus and you need to follow a proper strength training plan. Those are the principles for you to build muscle. Without that, you're not going to be able to build any muscle. So, okay, cool. Improve your flexibility. This would be obviously working on your mobility, your stretching, um, and this would be a daily action. If you really want to get flexible or if you really want to do these things, then the principle for this is X, Y, Z. So now we know what we want. We know I want to lose weight, for example. Okay, so to lose weight, I need to be in a calories deficit. Cool. Now I'm starting to understand why, like the reasons why. If you can understand why you have to do something, then there's more, there's more, there's more kind of reason for you to stick to it. So I need to be in a calorie deficit. Simple. So now we tie it together with your preferences. So this is going back to that don't join a race that we spoke about yesterday. Only do the things that you want to do in your life that keep you happy and that you enjoy. Never start a race which is, has the things which you don't enjoy. The, you know, I don't want to track my food. I don't want to do that. Well, don't do them. Let's, let's, let's build something for you that you like to do because we know you're going to stick to it. So what do you like doing? What don't you like doing? What do you never want to give up? What makes you happy? So once we understand you, then we can start to look at, okay, what do I want? Weight loss. What are the principles? Calorie deficit. What do I want to do? Well, I want to eat cake and I want to do this. Cool. Let's do that. But the principle is you need to be in a calorie deficit. Cool. So how do I do that? That'll be your next step in terms of the education. So to be in a calorie deficit, but to still have these things in my, in my lifestyle, in my diet, then I need to upskill myself to a level where I can do this. So obviously those are the three things that you need to understand in terms of kind of piecing it all together because when you know what you want the principles around it and your 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 kind of preferences then you're going to stick to it because it's everything that you want to do but you're sticking to those sound principles or those governing laws but obviously like i said to do this you need to educate yourself because when you learn about yourself your body your preferences your personalities your drivers the magic starts to happen and that magic only happens because it's not I need to start this diet or I need to cut that out. I need to, I'm not allowed to do that because you can do, you can do a lot of things and a lot of people don't realize is how much choice they have when it comes to chasing their goal. The goal is here. You know, let's talk weight loss. The weight loss goal is here. There are hundreds and thousands of different routes, you know, to get to that path. It's not saying you have to do this or you have to do this. When we build up these things and you learn these things about you and what you want to do, and then you start to piece them together, that's, that's your path. It's, you know, it's no one else's, it's your path. So we always say, go slow to go fast. So take your time, be patient, build, raise the floor. All these things that we spoke about yesterday, put, just think about putting this all together. Think about these questions that you need to be asking yourself. Then start to write them down, start to build a routine, start to build a plan out for yourself that you then you, can, you know you're going to move forward with. So that's the OPP formula right there, guys. Understand it, understand how it, obviously how this all kind of applies to you and move forward with it. So that is the wrap up on the OPP formula. Hope you, that gave you a bit of insight into uh, where you want to go um, and how you need to get there. Obviously, there's no, I'm not telling you any, 
any magic answers again because there is no magic answers. The magic answer is learning a few of the uh, of the overlying kind of principles and then applying them day in day out. Okay, so guys, if you have any questions or Z, if you've been past the questions, then please hit me up. Um, and let's see what we get. All right, I've just unmuted myself. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, I've got you, yeah. All right, awesome. Okay, so I've got a question here. This is actually a, you know, an interesting one um, from Stephen, and he is asking, do you think one of the problems with the fitness industry is that people are always trying to sell the quick fix, unsustainable methods that don't work? Wow. Can you say that again? That was deep. <laughs> do He's asking, yeah, do you think one of the problems with the fitness industry is that people are always trying to sell the quick fix, unsustainable methods that don't work? So, yeah, I do agree. I think as a whole, as an industry, as a media industry, we have, we have hurt this industry. We have, we have tried to tell people they can get results fast. We've, this has been put down people's um, ears for a long, long time. So it's ingrained. So people want things fast. We live in a world where if our internet doesn't fire up straight away, then we get annoyed. This, this obviously goes for everything. I want to get results next week, tomorrow. So it's our job as fitness professionals to say, listen, you can start your journey. You're not going to get to maybe where you want to be, but let's get started for 30 days. Let's get started for seven days, for five days. Let's start building these better habits. And it's our job to educate them. And then actually, yeah, now you can see why we don't go for quick fixes. Anyone can lose weight fast. Anyone can not eat food for a week and lose weight. But what happens when you start eating food again? They're just going to be back to where they were. So it's about building habits, building routine, learning, educating themselves in how to move forwards over the long term. Because that's like the bigger picture here. So yeah, so as, as a whole, we have hurt the industry, but it's our job as fitness kind of professionals to then educate guys on how to do things better. That kind of answers it. Awesome. Yeah. I hope that answers your question, Stephen. That is, uh, I think that's pretty thorough. Okay. I've got one here from Debbie. She's asking, wants to know a bit more about bumpers. I think this is, this was from, uh, yesterday. And she's saying, I, how do you know what you should be optimizing for? And can you give her an example of, of what is allowed? Okay. So what are the bumpers? The bumpers are, imagine a bowling alley. Everything in the middle is all the stuff you enjoy. Everything on the outside, you don't want to do. This is your life. This is what makes you happy. What should you be optimizing for or, or what are you allowed to do? Again, this depends on you, Debbie. You know, depends on what you want. I can't tell you that. No one can tell you that. I can't say do this, this, and this. Like, do this exercise, do this routine because I don't know you. So you need to understand yourself. You need to start asking the questions to yourself in terms of what do you want out of life? Are you happy? And, I'm, and I mean, are you truly happy? There's a lot of people out there who pretend to be happy. And it's funny because I, um, I did this presentation the other day um, to a group of uh, Stockport key workers. And one of them was an ex-army. She was an ex-army PT 15 or 20 years ago. And now she's, she's not in the shape that she was. And she says that she's happy, you know, she comes across, you know, she jumped on and she was like, oh, yeah, you know, kind of laughing and joking, but, but I know she's overweight and I only know that because one of the other people reached out to me and said, this person, um, although she kind of came across like she knew everything and happy, she's not happy deep down. She wants to change, but because all she remembers is her past rather than thinking where she is now and taking her small steps, she needs to obviously take things slower so this is when i ask are you happy are you truly happy and if not you know let's start to make a plan and let's start to build into things that you want to do so i can't tell you what to what to optimize for because this is your life that awesome debbie. love that <laughs> yeah yeah i hope that helps debbie awesome love that okay so gail uh she's 43 and she's just starting out training wants to improve energy and be stronger for her kids what is the best Thing to do to get started would you say okay so you mentioned energy so I, I would first like to I'd like to see what what you're eating in terms of if if you are lacking in energy then what are you fueling yourself with but then on top of that what does your work life stress kind of look like where's the energy getting zapped 
is it from bad nutrition or not the right nutrition? I shouldn't say bad. Um, or is it from other daily stresses that, that we then need to obviously start to look at and start to explore? Um, that would be like a first point there. In terms of exercise, don't overthink it. Like start slow, start moving. If you haven't done anything, just get out and walk. Walk a bit faster, walk a bit slower. Build up that kind of frequency, so two to three times a week. Then in terms of some simple strength work, we can look at some body weight movements. Again, nothing too, nothing too intense because it doesn't need to be. Learn how to move properly. Learn some basic movements such as your squat, your hip hinge, your lunges, that type of stuff. And then start to load them slowly slowly load them so don't think you need to go changing everything at once so start slow and build these new things into your in like into like into your lifestyle awesome okay brilliant i've got one here from james james is asking if he can eat whatever he wants as long as he's in a calorie deficit and he'll still lose weight is that is that right that is right james that is right you can eat whatever you want twinkies chocolate bars cake as long as you are eating less than what your body needs you will lose weight however i'm not saying to go and eat a load of junk food and lose weight because it's probably not the best for you health wise because we we always look for trying to try and always trying to eat calorie dense um can nutrient dense foods foods that are going to give your body everything that it needs which obviously if you're constantly in the junk side of things um, high sugars, fats, that type of stuff, you're not going to get. So yes, you can lose weight by eating uh, anything. Is it the right way to do? No. Is it a stepping stone? Maybe, maybe we need to start building some habits where we can lose weight in a deficit. And then over time we start to change them for better foods. So that's like a bit of a journey that you have to go on. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, I've got one here. You got one here from Martin. I'm not sure if this is the this is our Martin potentially. He's like, but says he wants to know the best exercise for big arms in brackets without doing any work. <laughs> LOL. So I think I think it might be a little bit a bit of a wind yeah. up here. But I mean, you know, everyone wants big arms. Oh, well, I'll say everyone. All 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 guys want big arms. Um, so how do you get big arms? You need to follow a proper strength training plan. You need to be consistent with it. You need to be hitting the big compound exercises first. And we'll dive into this over the next few days in terms of how we approach our training. We, we do it in two ways. We, we train movements, big exercises, focus on overload. But then we also train the muscles as well. And when you train the muscles, you've got to think about them a little bit more. It's not just about do 12 reps, do 15 reps. No, if we're focused on our hand hitting a muscle, we've got to make it hurt. We've got to make it burn. So especially when it comes to arms, drop the weight down and just focus on that muscle doing its full, you know, full range of motion and working properly. So sorry, there's no quick fixes there. Uh, you just got to be consistent with it. So let's, let's chat again in three months time. <laughs> awesome. Well, hopefully that'll help the big guy out. Okay, great. We've got one here from Tracy. Uh, it says she's struggling with poor sleep. Any tips to help her get a solid night's kip? Okay. So this could be anything, Tracy. This could be, let's, again, going back to, was it Gail, in terms of her life stress, what's going on there? Is there anything which we could, which, which needs kind of looking at? Because there's no point in me saying, go to bed early, do this and this, if all this other all stress and everything, which is maybe causing you not to sleep, isn't going away. So yes, this is the symptom of not sleeping. What is the actual cause of it? So finding the cause is obviously key. Then we can start to look at building a, a bit of a nighttime routine half past eight, eight o'clock, um, we turn, turn the lights off, turn the TVs off, no phones, we, we go have a bath, uh, we then maybe read a book, we then uh, might put some music on or meditate. And obviously these are a lot of things to do at once, so you might not want to do them all because then you don't know which one might, might, you know, kind of might work for you. So it might just be as simple as turn the lights off, go to bed and try and meditate for 10 minutes. Use, you know, there's so many apps these days that you can use see if that works if it doesn't then we can obviously try a different avenue uh, maybe having a few more carbs before bed as well and um, that can sometimes help so yeah so need to look at what is the cause of it and then try and build up a bit of a routine of, of what needs to move forward okay got it hopefully that helps tracy um okay steve's just asking uh he says i want i want to look a bodybuilder this is me a, a it's a, it's a diff difficult question to answer i want to look like a bodybuilder but i don't have time to train more than three times per week what do you recommend i do okay so 
my reply here would be in terms of bodybuilder, what, who are we, who are we thinking of? We have so many different types of bodybuilders, different weight categories. You've got Ronnie Coleman over here, huge, huge, huge man. And we have, you know, let's, you know, let's think Arnie in the middle, really good looking body. Whereas obviously Ronnie took it to the extreme bodybuilder. And then we have bodybuilders who are maybe 65 kilos. That's who I've worked with. Um, so who, who are we looking at and are we also looking at how they look on stage? Because remember that doesn't happen all the time. But obviously these guys all have one thing in common. They train hard. They do everything. They'll train movements. They'll train muscles. Yes, they might train a bit more frequent, but if you can still do three days, that's still a lot of time to get a lot of work in and focus towards your goal. If we can do that, which is the training side, then we can tie in your food then we can tie in your sleep and you know your recovery. Suddenly, you're going to start to get get those better results. Um, so maybe you don't want to be you don't want to train as a bodybuilder because you don't have the time. Cool. Just just put the effort in and choose the right exercises for those three days that you've got. Awesome, love that sound sound advice. Okay, I've got one more for you. Uh, this one's from the Jan and wants to know what is the principle for building muscle and getting abs. Oh. That's not the first time you've heard that. <laughs> I was, I reckon I would be a millionaire if if everyone had said every time people come into the gym, I took a pound off them for saying that. Everybody, everyone wants to build muscle and get abs. What's the answer? The answer is everyone's different. Some people are going to build muscle faster. Some people are going to lose fat faster. Which one's going to be right for you? It's a bit of trial and error because we need to play around with where your calories need to be, where your intensity needs to be. Um, in terms of your food, I'd probably be in a slight deficit and I would train like a demon. I would train like a savage. Um, as you get leaner, which you will, because you're in a deficit, you'll probably start to think your muscles look bigger just because you're leaner, but not necessarily have they grown as such because obviously that takes a lot of time. So my advice would be to be in a slight deficit. Make sure your training is on point. Make sure everything else is on point. Um, and then just kind of play around with it, track it, kind of monitor it every three, four weeks and see what needs to be changed. Because I reckon if you do that over time, you'll look back and you'll be like, wow, I look so different than how I was because yes, you are probably leaner, which is then shown more muscle. So therefore you look um, like you've built a lot more muscle. If that makes sense. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Wise, wise words, wise words as always. Okay. Well that, that's all I got. Lovely guys. Well, questions. thanks very much for the questions. I like the context around them because as always, we like to say, what does the question relate to you? And a lot of, the, like a lot, like a lot of this stuff that we spoke about yesterday and um, today is finding a, who you are, what do you want, what, you know, what makes you tick, you know, what's your jam. Once you can understand all these things, once you can understand your life and your life stresses and your family and all this, then you can then start to move forward before you, before, understanding any of that it's hard to say do this do this because everyone is different everyone needs to find their own journey so over the next few days we're going to dive a bit more into um the programming the exercises about you and your body and how you can then start to build a routine that that obviously suits you so i hope that's uh, made you think a little bit more for the guys who are obviously in the in the uh, the group here please uh, go through those questions answer them out then we'll have the questions from yesterday we'll have the questions from today and then we can then, by the end of the week, we can then start to say, right, this is, these are all my answers. What do I need to do? Um, so, guys, hope that's been helpful. Uh, and let's catch up tomorrow, 7 o'clock. I'll see you guys there.